Well, when you've spent your whole life in the in the fish hobby, it's really discouraging to find out that you could be a criminal. If you shut down the tropical fish industry in Florida, you pretty well decimated the industry nationwide. In essence, it'd be their drug war against animals. Well, the, then you create a whole black market and you have no control over it. Come right on in. You're in Father Fish. Let me introduce you to, to Bill Shields. Bill's an old friend. He is one of the foremost elephant trainers in modern history, curiously. <laughs> but elephant midwife. To be elephant that. midwife, right. He also worked for a couple of companies, large fish farms in Florida as the primary breeder and is responsible for d developing the glowfish. That is to say, he's the one who figured out how to breed it and how to get the enormous populations. Bill, you contacted our Facebook page a couple of days ago trying to get a um, a video up that you wanted to share from ARC. Uh, ARC is uh, a national organization supporting the pet industry. It has a Florida chapter which is involved right now in what's going on with the Florida Wildlife Commission commissioners. Would you care to just lay out briefly what we're looking at right now well this is uh something i've been talking about and bugging people about for years and years and years it was like you i was in the retail uh, pet business many years ago and uh, even then it was starting to come about uh no animals in contact with people for any reason not for eating not for medical not for pets, not for companion, not for uh, therapy animals, nothing. I believe their, uh, their quote is, uh, if they can't uh, be turned loose in the wild and live, then we need to put them out of their misery humanely. Well, you know, no living animals in contact with that does concern us, because we take care of living animals, provide them with habitat and reproduce them. I mean, this is our joy in life, or at least it's my joy in life. I've been doing it for... Uh, over 70 years, I think I started when I was six or seven, and now the FWC commissioners have been meeting with the uh, ARC people, U.S. ARC, uh, which are primarily uh, involved with the reptile end of the hobby. They, along with Sandy Moore from Seagrass Farms and Joe Hyduke from uh, Nautilus, where I used to work, they've gone in for expert input. They saw we need expert input, so they had TAG meetings, you know, what the acronym stands for, but anyhow, uh, expert industry and hobby leaders giving input into the commission so they can come up with a uh, informed and intelligent decision. We were presented with two interpretations of what was said at the last FWC commission meeting. We were have to, going to have to compile a list of species currently in trade or in possession in Florida. And if it was on one of those lists, it would be allowed to be imported and all that would need to be reviewed or have a risk assessment would be a species that's not currently in trade or in possession in Florida. And then today we had that interpretation as well as an interpretation number two was that if it had not had a full risk assessment, it could not be imported into Florida. And the numbers we got today were there are only about 205 species of animals that have been actually had a proper and full risk assessment done. So their idea is coming up with a whitelist. I don't know if people are familiar with the whitelist, but that's uh, any animal that is allowable, non-harmful by their interpretation to the ecosystem, environment, or whatever. Uh, the, the numbers that invade me, but there's tens of thousands of animals, birds. So in aquaculture, we're looking over 20,000 species that are in trade in Florida. On the herp side of things, we're looking at about 3,000 species of reptiles and amphibians, plus you have birds and mammals on top of that. So we're probably looking at close to 30,000 species in trade and only 200 of those 30,000 have actually had a risk assessment. The industry leaders, Art, Sandy, Joe Hyduke, uh, Charlie Nunziata from the uh, killifish world, suggested, why don't you do a blacklist? These are animals that we know are harmful, we won't import, 
uh, piranhas, whatever, that harmful animals that everybody common sense wise knows you don't want to. And that would eliminate the numbers of animals, still a relatively small database, which inspectors, enforcers, whoever could easily identify or, or have access to identifying rather than the tens of thousands of animals, especially fish, there's new genus and species every day coming in. I mean, as they get further back into the uh, the wilds, the uh, new stuff comes in. And one of the criterias uh, early on was, well, if it hasn't been imported in X amount of numbers by the thousands of years past, then it's got to go through the process. Well, there's brand new stuff coming in. And uh, a lot of it is, I'm a killifish hobbyist, data fish hobbyist, Primarily, uh, there's brand new stuff, and there's just a handful of us keep it. All of a sudden, now we're going to be on the wrong side of the wall. These aren't the same people that put the or the peacock bass in the southern Florida because it's a great money-making, money-generating sports app. In essence, it'd be their drug war against animals. Well, the, then uh, you create a whole black market, and you have no control over it. Now, this comes straight out of Senator Rubio and his efforts a year ago. The idea is to shut down the importation of every single animal with the exception of those that have been researched, studied, and approved. There are only about 205 species of animals that have been actually had a proper and full risk assessment done. So 205 species out of 30,000 species in trade. So by interpretation number two, that would mean over 29,000 species could not be brought into Florida unless someone is going to pay possibly eight to ten thousand dollars per risk assessment per species to get those assessed to be brought into Florida. And in addition to that uh, ten thousand dollar price tag, uh, the estimate on time six months to a year per evaluation. Yes, and also that six to twelve months of time plus that ten thousand dollars does not guarantee anything. So you could pay ten thousand dollars for a risk assessment, wait a year and then be told that you can't bring that species into the state. But again, we don't know that that's going to happen. We want to make that clear. That was just one of the interpretations that we got today. Bill, what's your sense of why the commissioners are coming down so hard on opposing the animal trade in Florida? My understanding is the commissioners are our political appointee. That doesn't mean they had expertise in the area, but for whatever reason, they got the position as a political appointee. I don't know personally, but from the way they're commenting and acting, it doesn't seem like they have any any knowledge about what's really happening in the real world of animals. So the way Florida is set up, if you're not familiar with it, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, there's actually government appointed commissioners here who may be a land developer or something totally not involved in any of these animal industries or even conservation. You know, they're coming from different backgrounds. Almost always they come from a land development background. From a developer standpoint, they're looking at the availability of land and fish farms are prime land. They, they sit high enough that they can be built on. They're generally attached to metropolitan areas. Riverview is a good case in point. Right between Sarasota and Tampa, that's where most of the farms are. It's prime real estate. You know, that's exactly what happened with the net ban 25 years ago. The net ban was imposed because of the influence of, of the marina industry that saw local fish houses as holding prime waterfront real estate that if they were shut down could be converted very easily with no regulatory complications into marinas. Marinas of course are dead zones. Nothing lives near a marina. The, the paints, the toxins, the fuels, all of the chemicals that go into the, the water around marinas kill everything. That's precisely what we're facing today. And it's happening for exactly the same reasons. Well, when you've spent your whole life in the, in the fish hobby, it's really discouraging to find out that you could be a criminal. Jail time and a fine for mislabeling, trying to sneak them in any of the prohibited fish. And the way they interpret the federal law is, 
if any country determines a fish needs protected, it automatically becomes protected here. And you, by default, become a criminal, a violator of the law. So it's uh, kind of scary. Some of the most common fish no longer exist in the wild. If they're exterminated in the hobby, they become utterly extinct. They will no longer exist in the wild. They don't now. And that's true certainly of many, many killifish. And at the same time, these fish we're talking about, well, any of the annuals, a lot of the habitats, yeah, they're getting developed over. They put a road over it or some sort of factory over it, and that's the only place in the world those fish came from. And so they're gone, except in some hobbyist tank somewhere that's propagate. What this means is there may well be no species that are currently approved under these guidelines for sale or importation into Florida. That includes 30,000 species of fish, three to 4,000 species of reptile, insects, birds. I assume they're going to accept Rubio's exception of dogs and cats. It'll impact the zoo population, but more importantly, there are a number of large ranches in Florida that keep and breed exotic animals, such as giraffes, elephants, hippopotamus, other rare and endangered species, which under these guidelines will no longer be allowed. The other side of it is that Florida leads the way, FWC leads the way among all of the states in setting policy. Many, many local states follow the lead of the FWC because they are presumed to be the best informed, the best researched, the best funded of, of all of the wildlife commissions in this country. If you shut down the tropical fish industry in Florida, you pretty well decimated the industry nationwide. Uh, there's links on uh, the Camp Bay Aquarium site page. I put it up. I put. It, I think I put it up most of the club. Uh, for if you're a Florida resident, to write to the governor. And also, uh, Joe Heidi put one up to. Uh, there's a link to uh, write comments into the FWC commissioners for whatever good it does, but it just. If you're a Florida resident, be polite, be uh, courteous, just hit them with the, the cold hard facts or what's going on.